unilateral hearing loss is just as serious as a mild hearing loss or a moderate hearing loss. Um, it's a hearing loss in one ear, and it can cause significant trouble at learning. These children are at 10 times greater risk for academic failure, and they also repeat grades. So with a unilateral hearing loss, you have a difficulty in identifying speech and noise, localizing sound sources, or discerning speech, even when it's detected by the good ear. There are differences in behavior. The child might be more distractible, more frustrated, more dependent, less attentive, and less confident in the classroom. There are noticeable behavior differences, but the connection is rarely made between behavior and hearing because the child has one good ear. So you think, oh, well, they can just hear with their good ear. But you have two ears for a reason. We really have two ears because they work together. They work together for localization. They work together for binaural summation, which is an amplification of sound to our brain and binaural squelch, which gets rid of background noise. So we have two ears for a reason. So with a unilateral hearing loss, you could have a good ear of a pure tone average of 15 dBHL or better, and a poor ear of 20 dB or worse. You could have air conduction thresholds poorer than 25 dBHL at two frequencies above 2000 Hertz. And unfortunately, newborn hearing screening tends to miss mild hearing losses both bilateral and unilateral hearing losses because they are conducted at 25 dB. So these children with mild hearing losses tend to slip through the cracks and they're not really diagnosed until later on in school if they have a parent or a pediatrician that's really on top of things. So like I said, there's difficulty in understanding or localizing sound, understanding speech and noise, a reduction in distance hearing, and it interferes with incidental learning, and that's that overhearing of learning. Things that you can do, you can improve the signal-to-noise ratio by positioning the child closer to the teacher. You can create a more equal binaural hearing through amplification, where you amplify the ear that needs the extra help, provide extra or enriched auditory language and preliteracy stimulation, parental counseling on issues that have to do with unilateral hearing loss and how you can't just think, oh, well, they still have one good ear. The more severe the hearing loss, the greater the likelihood of academic failure. This tends to be more common in the right ear, but you should still monitor both ears. Possible causes include CMV, enlarged vestibular aqueduct, and genetics. Uh, congenital is a hearing loss that typically occurs before, at, or shortly after birth prior to learning speech and language, usually before the age of three, and an acquired hearing loss is after speech and language has developed. Because there's already been some brain programming in the auditory cortex, the negative effects of acquired hearing loss are less severe, so the brain has had time to make those connections for sound development. The earlier the hearing loss occurs, the more it interferes with language and learning development in the auditory cortex, unless the child receives effective intervention. The effects are not as pervasive if the child has already been able to establish some complex linguistic systems and mature neural connections. However, speech can degenerate if speech conservation therapy is not provided. So you can't just think, oh, they've had language, they'll be okay have to keep at it.